Alliances oh. turn to ban. Radiant team ban. <sighs> Alliances turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Hey. Welcome back. Alliance versus Penta! Strap yourselves in. We're going to have ourselves a nice, long and juicy game, hopefully, with a very balanced Radiant draft, which isn't very one-dimensional. I didn't sense any sarcasm. No! It's all sarcasm. We're a little bit disappointed with the last game. It was, uh... It was one of those games where you just like, you know what, this really a lot of what ten ifs. seconds, really. yeah, yeah. Like it's it's one of those games which like you get a tweet from a player shortly after just where you go, Alliances man. Turn to pick. I think I was a little harsh in that game, maybe. But at the same time, you're like, there's not that many other options you can look at where you're like, okay, well, this is how you can win this game, and this is how you could lose this game, and pretty much it it's comes all from a in the second. It comes from a place of love. Oh yeah, we yeah, want, an improvement for the next game. Exactly. Yeah. Because we're obviously authorities. Yeah. Five yeah, I've only been casting this game for about 10 years. <laughs> like, I don't know Jack. Venom um, Hi. What do you know about oh, this? Oh, would you look at it? It's, it's about Venom Man versus Spark. Spark. Right, Spark. Right, this is a Sky Wrath Mage. Okay, at least Radiant someone's going to buy a veil in this game. Hopefully. I get the you got to. If they don't, then something is wrong. But, like, we went through that last game with no veil. No. Nope. Drow Ranger. Any. Well, on, on the Radiant team, it didn't to make bad. two. Oh, hey. How about that? Now, I vaguely recall you telling me something about a puck and how uh, this uh, white haired girl often <laughs> synergizes well with puck. I can't tell. She's not even named, able to have a name. She's, she's just from. <laughs> I wouldn't want to sully Well, it. she's from the arse end of the Dota 2 world. You yeah, know, I'm somewhat familiar with You know with what? That. We actually had like this in Warcraft 3. It was the greatest storyline ever. Like the undead night elf. We had Traxxas. Like, she remaining. was she was a boss and she was the Drow Ranger. Oh. Like seconds, in, in Warcraft 3. You know what her storyline is in Dota 2? No. She's the ugly duckling. Alliance it's literally the ugly duckling story storyline. Like she was, well, I didn't even know, like, I needed slacks to be the full authority on it. Um, but basically, yeah, she's with a whole bunch of people who are meant to be the ugliest people in the world. Wow. Um, but Ten they think they're all pretty remaining. normal, and because she's beautiful to everyone else... Five seconds to, remaining. Uh, <laughs> she, she is meant to be the, the ugly one because she's good-looking. So oh. she's the odd one out. Okay. Yeah. And she doesn't know this, so, like, and most of her armor pieces she ever gets uh, is from travelers who pass by their area and leave things behind. As gifts? Uh, not as gifts, like, she just is a scavenger. Oh. Like, she's, like, she's basically a beggar ranger. Is the be no, that's, that's what we should call it. She's beggar ranger. In the current meta, she's definitely a 100% for sure. Because this is not a hero that you can just slap into any draft and expect. So. I agree. <laughs> like, there's there's two heroes, uh, there's three heroes actually that give her a real pain in the butt. Uh, at least when it comes to pubs, I don't know if the, if it goes translates that far into the meta. Radiant Clockwork is number ben. one. Uh, Slark is number two for me. And PA is number three. Okay. Like these three heroes, the 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 range closing heroes, which can't just be gusted away easily. <sighs> these are the ones that cause you a nightmare. And Alliances ones that are eminently viable with what Alliance have so far. Now, that's definitely a risk from picking Drow first phase like that. Now, Puck is such a common meta pick these days that you don't really reasonably expect, like, oh, they picked a Puck, surely a Drow Ranger is coming up. So I'm also Radiant surprised that Penta opted pick. for such an early phase Drow Ranger, yeah. but they go for it, and maybe they're just planning on, like, you know, Dusa vengeful spirit and they really just want to go hammer home this full out drow lineup. Oh, you could. Witch doctor. That'll work as well. Alliances okay. turn to pick. I actually don't mind this. Like their their lane presence is gonna be really good if they run the off lane puck or the mid puck. I'm actually I kinda prefer mid puck. Because okay. they need some strength from their third core. And something like a DK something like a tank. 
Yeah, they. Ten what was the same seconds she was remaining. Somewhat so, like, yeah. It was like, okay, we've we got to go for a DK because we need someone that can Five tank on the front lines. Remaining. And we've lacked this from everything. And both drafts are actually. Reserve Historically, Alliance time. isn't really. And it doesn't even seem like they care too much about this Drow Ranger pick. Like, um, I believe it was Alliance that ran Bounty Hunter earlier on. Uh, at, uh, Mouse Sports had also run the Bounty Hunter earlier on. Seems like EU, just EU, because I don't really see Bounty Hunter seems to favor this hero and what it bides. And time and time again, Skyrath is proving to be a signature hero for Alliance. They really like with this hero. They like its versatility. Either you can go heavy on the Arcane Bolt for the lane dominance, or you can go heavy seal, which is probably going to be pretty good. You said a veil is probably high on the menu because how, how's actually how's that work with amplification? Like both veil and seal. Oh, it'll stack. Yeah, it's a lot of bonus damage, and it's in very. Problem is that it's not really burst oriented, and so like veil and seal, like you pair it up with like Alina, and then all of a sudden someone gets Back it. Strength like a dragon. Radiant team pick. But uh, with Venomancer, it's maybe not quite as effective because it's OT, but still, it's a bunch of magic. Bad Rider also adds on. Distance closes. 10 seconds goal. remaining. A lot of magical burst. Five and very remaining. little for Penta to tank through it. And, uh, and I'm worried they're going to go like knee jerk reaction to try and stay alive. Alliance pick up turn to bad. Squishy draft. <laughs> yeah, from... I I, I kind of want to say from both sides it's still squishy. Oh, yeah, like definitely. we're still waiting for the strength from the last one. But Alliance can get away with having a squishier draft because the or well I mean Venomancer has proven remaining. to only have that kind of squishy initial phase like when he's just start, Five seconds first starting remaining. to you know bl yeah. after you hit like level six and you complete like whatever your first item of choice Reserve is on time. the core Venomancer. It typically proves to be some sort of tanking up, tanking up items. So I'm not too concerned about the Venomancer. Bounty Hunter is never really in fights that much. So even though he's squishy, it's fine. And one squishy support is legit Bad Rider. Yeah. He's he's going to be able to. Penta, Radiant on the other hand, team ban. I mean, all you have is really the puck to be able to serve as a distraction to keep this Drow Ranger protected. That's yeah. that's when you get aggressive, right? So when you, uh, team pick. I don't want to say you run an aggro tri lane because I don't think that's going to work. One, the drow's got to go up against the rider with the witch doctor, but you can you can at least run like a dual lane off the puck with a plus one. Someone who rests nicely. Ten seconds yeah. remaining. Actually, you they, got something. They could chant it. Five seconds remaining. Spirit I, I'm just thinking like what's going to force the lane a little bit harder. All right, every spirit pick. breaker. Kind of fits all the fits all checks all the boxes that we had. Strength hero causes chaos, mm -hmm. provides decoy protection for Drow Ranger, and really provides protection for every single lane with the global dominance. <gasps> Poor Drow, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Spectre wasn't on your list. Is there any reason why Spectre wasn't on your list? Yeah, because it's um, got no D-push. Uh, there's no way if Penta actually have a half-decent laning phase, mm. the Venomancer isn't going to hold back anything. And uh, like you're running, what, a Veno, Veno 2 position here? So it's Veno versus Lena mm -hmm. in mid. Very, very easy for Spirit Breaker to get. Very, right. very easy. And there's not a lot of bounty and Skyrath can do about it. Like they're they might be able to harass them back, but beyond that. Ten seconds important. remaining. Yeah. Now I if, if Penta can actually get like remaining. an early aggressive fight, they're which, gonna be looking really good. Which Penta love. And uh I had seen D and Z earlier today, clockwork. And despite never managing was still relentless at showing up into it wasn't working out. He multiple times, but it definitely was that Penta are not ones to... Well, if, if Penta are aggressive and it pays off, then I feel like Alliance can lose control of this game very, very quickly, and the spec will be forever looking towards building a ring. And this is my concern for their lineup. Uh, at the same time, if the early pressure from the Drone Ranger doesn't come to fruition, um, then... 
that alliance. Okay. It looks possible. And that's also Prepare why I don't know 100% if Spectre is going to go straight for Radiance. Uh, honestly, I think a Pink Guard might be more in her interests. Because Do you actually think it might be worthwhile uh, going for like the Blade Mount a little bit earlier? I don't think that there's an... Like, all of Penta are able to participate in bullying the Spectre. Usually I like Blade Mill whenever there's like something like a Slark, or one hero, like a clip loves bullet one carry. But whenever the whole team can kind of huddle up on top of one hero, then I feel like Blade Mill is an efficacy. So I think just tanking up is probably better. She's able to survive for a little bit longer than that. Mano's going to be able to do more DOT, more tracks are going to come out, Batrider's going to be able to do more damage. So they have late game guarantee. I don't think that they need to go too deep on. We'll see. We will. It is Aero playing it in the safe lane, <laughs> so. Actually, yeah. I don't really want to like say like Error is going to be a player that will definitely do this. Like if it was Loader, would probably understand this game a lot better. True. That's actually one of the, the things I was uh, flagging up for Alliance coming into this tournament that I think was going to serve them the better is the fact that they are not as predictable anymore. <laughs> yes, Error is a player we got a lot of data on, got a lot of like history for him, but this new lineup. Like, you know RK and Loda really would have dictated a lot of the, like, the approaches, the timing, the heroes, the picks. And this is... This is a very different lineup. This actually feels more like... Plexity? Uh... <laughs> it, it feels like a completely different team for the Alliance you would have known in the past. Based off of hero picks, I can somewhat agree, but you will see them fall back on old, reliable split push strategies, because it's still just, it seems like it's in their blood. And Era is somewhat new blood, as now working on Ruby, who has phase shift, and oh, Yeah, because he actually went for phase shift first level, they could do this. But Hasken, too much damage from the tower! One more hit, he'll actually survive thanks to the salve, the puck will be the first one going down. Shift, but he didn't face shift the arcane bolt. He didn't face shift the right click. Now, spear breaker. I don't know if it's that. Thing. I don't know if that. That definitely should not have. No, that really shouldn't have. This this is that that thing which like uh, you you worry about like when you feed off like that kind of kill on the on the top lane. But at the same time, the drone's gonna be having a good time on bottom. Uh, Fat Rider will be an issue down here, but still Unison Farm hasn't found a last hit. Like, I know we're a minute and a half in, and he's gonna cop a lot of harassment. But this is kind of like the, the dream start, as long as you can get your stacks going from jabs, and then he could just pull. Which Doctor, as it is, has extremely high base damage, and right now Precision Aura is just level 1. Each hero's damage by 5, but Fat Rider is definitely getting the zone relatively heavily. Now there's a Spirit Breaker charging on him. Probably can't really do much with that as Jabs is still level 1, but like you said, the name of the pressure and stacks. The Observer will also didn't scatter it out, just because of the position of it. There's only Cold Arrows level 1, but the slow should be enough for DNZ to get that final bash in. On the Spirit Breaker, make sure that it was just continually slowed down. and plus Draw Ranger actually went for first as opposed to like whenever I play Draw Ranger I hate her auto attack animation so I'm like I have to get close this is now so it does use a page shift. I found the easier way uh, for the Draw Ranger is to rack up a couple more stats. Oh okay so you That's... get like some boots of Elven skin? Yeah you uh, you've actually built up half of your cooler. Oh okay. Uh, at the very very beginning. <laughs> Trouble again. Silence is out. He does have face shift. Oh, the silence is going to last too long, however. It's uh, only one point in it, but one point is long enough. So Puck will fall once more. This is a Puck with Drow Aura, so not only should you... Yeah, I mean, at the minimum, you should be free. And it is a tri lane situation, so it's not the easy. But you can't really... Puck is not a hero that should fall this far behind. Now you're going to free up Bounty Hunter to go elsewhere. You're going to free up Skyrim to go elsewhere. Looks like what they're doing. The oh, smoke yeah. is cooling off the backpack. You know, so far did not want to have this happen. He's sharing experience. Now they're going to charge forward. 
Paralyzing Cast gonna bounce down. Won't come back up again, but with the extra slow, the damage, you know, some farm actually getting bashed as well. And here comes a hasted Lena. A quick slate to find the pick. Up in the neighborhood, and then he has to seal. It's gonna go once over on the Lena. At least cancels off that high level Slay Spirit Breaker. No man to charge himself away. And we'll all retreat. Jabs may be picked off on the way out. Sticky napalmed up. Firefly is available if he wants to do it. You know, so fun. Couldn't get the body block off. They should have enough damage. Paralyzing cast can turn for. <laughs> okay, no, we can't turn for it. Sticky napalmed up. A lot of gunk in those gears. And actually, Bushwalker has not gotten like, a stick or anything, so. Survivability against the metal. A charge in top lane. Era. Oh, man. Maybe some RPG to work for this one. He's Petrol Daggers tries to move around the tree line. But paralyzing Cask and Error cannot allow this to happen. The Rage Troops helping out, but it's Jabs to get the last hit in. Mid lane, though. Pablo do something on this Lena. Every single time you see a rotation somewhere, that means that some other lane, Seesaw has gone in another direction. Pablo has done enough work in this off lane on Puck, which it left Spectre a little bit. She got punished for it, but. You want to look to the other lanes rather than just perpetually. Interesting that it's uh, arcane choice from the Lena. I was expecting something more like uh, face boots, like high amounts of DPS in the lane, and then just getting some mana regeneration. I suppose she has over crystal main this game. Yeah, and I don't really think that just in sticking around. That's what gets more. Makes it easy. <laughs> Good space creation from DNZ. You already had the draw range to move over so quickly. And the sentry ward was down. It was used to actually de-ward previously. And it also helps them kill off Pablo. They have to protect their stack. Use some bombs gonna take it all if they're not careful. There are three heroes to do it. DNZ has a charge ready. They can get the small. They go to first charge, cold arrows, paralyzing cast. Won't actually bounce to Pablo, will it bounce back up again, use some farm, will fall. But at the same time, Jabs yes. the slow, Pablo, oh, the he can't move. reach him. He couldn't move around, couldn't turn in time. Pablo bash. goes invis, but they have Dustin available. DNZ will bash him out. That was so unfortunate for the bounty hunter. I'm pretty sure he was attack moving because Jabs had just gone all up the stairs and the bounty hunter lost vision. So it's like, okay, as soon as I get vision on the stairs, I'm going to be able to get a right click. Instead, Spirit Breaker was the target of choice for that and he turned around just for a brief moment. He was not able to get a kill on the damage doctor. And now, the Spirit Breaker moves 2 1 and 4 right now. He has participated in every single kill. Nice and active Spirit Breaker. Just the kind of one that you can dream of. Isn't it? Yep. The only issue he's going to have Radiant's is up against uh, Limp is the highest CS throw on the board. If we actually bring up the net worth, he is number one on that as well. You do have the slight imbalance just because of the Draw Ranger aura. And he's going to be careful about his Plague Wards too. This is easy farm if, he, if uh, Blaze wants it. Because he can mop up the creep quite quickly and then take care of the wards. Yeah, he has one point in Fiery Soul. And he has this double damage, so let's see. It still takes three clicks. He times out, so. Oh. Oh, wow. I, that one's on me. I was actually waiting for the gank in mid lane. I'll yeah, get as well as Pablo <laughs> waiting for it. Yeah, I mean, DNZ is definitely. This is like a marked shift from its original games. Now, even <laughs> They are biding their time. Yeah, here they come. So, seal. Slow him down, shuriken toss, damage with scale. It's gonna be high, a quick Laguna Blade. Looks for the rebuttal, and maybe with the two points up in healing, they're actually gonna keep Blades alive through all of these ticks. They're able to do so. Alliance fail on the gank. They just lost their top lane as well. Error, Error is actually it. He's under the net worth of the puck. He's 2k to the 2.1k of Boogie. Yeah. And Boogie has boots and a wand. <laughs> saving for a saving for a blink dagger, which is where the rest of his money is. <laughs> Maybe I make that sound a little bit harsher when I say oh he's got his boots and a wand. Paralyzing cast, a little bit of sounds to Unison Farm, but support's coming in, in the form of Pablo. But with Observer and Sentry down, they know exactly where he is. Dust him up. And Pablo Penta sends their regards. Yeah, and not only is Bounty Hunter not 
happening right now, but the Witch Doctor is participating in all of these kill attacks. That he's gonna have money to burn on Sentry Woods. If you're not able to find this early advantage as a bounty hunter, it just gets worse and worse because mm -hmm. detection becomes more and more rampant, and that's not even considering the Spirit Breaker factor. Proceeds to charge up top, probably gonna cancel now. But Boogie's level 7 now, has Dream Coil. DNZ not quite level 6 for that now. Clearly he's shown he just. Yeah. He just needs a couple of a couple of support friends. They all have plus 37 damage. The Dro Ranger has had free reign to now go for the four points or a build. There was no pressure to get any points up more in Gust or into the uh, cold. What is this roster? Let's just push the top lane die. Uh, well, okay, maybe not. Oh, the oh, Dream Call with die. three of them. He's still low, but Blaze will arrive. He's got Laguna Blade up. They can pop the Skywrath Mage in the corner if they just want to nuke him. Actually, there's not enough mana for it. Spectre goes down as well. Oh boy, down the bottom lane. Thought he was safe with a haunt, but he just went face first into a Witch Doctor. Three points in Voodoo Restoration for this Witch Doctor, so he could gladly 1v1 a Spectre and come out on top. Three heroes go down in quick succession for Alliance. This means you're gonna lose buildings now. You don't, you don't have the farm in order to be able to stand and defend. Like, what does he do some farm do? Does he go for his drums and he try and still get the Blink Dagger up and running? I'm surprised he went for Lasso at 6. I don't think this was a Lasso at 6 kind of game. Dagger, DNZ. He can't charge away just yet. Boogie doesn't have Dream Call available. Hans can, try, Hans can try and keep him out just with a concussive shot. So, yep, there's your charge. Turns around with the orb to jump up into a double silence from the Rift. Skyrath Mage, one more attack will do it. DNC will lose his life for this. The Gale connecting on Boogie, starts his own TP. They don't have a stun and they don't have the tick damage at base. He's got eight one charges anyway. Yeah, he fine. shouldn't die, but he doesn't want to have to burn the charges. Um, nerves of steel. He's going to survive in the air. But they see units of fun coming. The aggressive observer wants sees everything. They charge over, jabs, plays it beautifully, hide in the corner, now throw the first paralyzing cast. It's buying time for the Dro Ranger to also move over, and Unison Farm has to firefly himself away to safety. Oh, oh wow, he's, safe. he's not safe enough though. He's going, he, he has Nether Strike. That's underneath the tower. Yep, Nether Strike, push him back, because Kid is going to get in range. Three arrows will do the job, except his, his jab who finds it. It out. Hey. Courier, no. I mean, th there were two TP rotations coming in, but like Spectre didn't have Haunt, and it wasn't a Skywrath either. Skywrath was just walking over to the mid lane. And these are... Oh, Pookie. The Spirit Breaker is charging. He's only just past the tier 1 tower in mid lane, and oh, the Laguna Blade! It's not enough. Nether Strike's not up, but the Light Strike array controlling up the Skywrath main. Skywrath will fall. Oh boy, it's like Alliance have to react to Penta's early aggression and they just cannot get there in time. And this is, uh, I, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't ask for a better game as a Trout Ranger and she's returning the favor. Right now there is 40 damage coming out from Precision Aura. Every range hero on her team basically is working with a Demon Edge in their inventory. <laughs> Lena just like, with the Fiery Soul, she, I, she actually didn't put that many points in Fiery Soul. Yeah, I thought that maybe with the Trout Ranger. This much damage, which is one point fiery soul. Imagine what it's gonna. Excellent. I love how Skidder also understands his situation. Like he's got full magic wand, Aquila, drums, and now he's building into the hood. So he's he's not even like saying, oh, I gotta get dragon lance because I get my ten strength out of that. I get my attack range increase. I can push down buildings. It's like as long as I survive in the vice. It's not even the fight. Things will work. As long as he survives, period. It's like having that Crystal Maiden on your team. Dyer's like, she's just in the jungle, but you get Arcane Aura. That's global. So, she, Skitter is just gonna chill in the jungle. No need to put yourself in a hunt before you complete any items. Run away, Jabs. He's worried that the bounty was a little bit closer, so triggered the dust. Use some farm. Let's see. Yeah, they're, they're trying to de ward the, the fresh orbs that's down. But now the pressure gets applied to the mid lane. Dyer's At least they have six on bounty hunter. That is an upside, Dyer's but it still requires Dyer's them to get a kill to really make the most out of that. Before they have five of those compared to sixteen of Penta. Well, when Penta's grouped up like this, the only issue Penta has is uh, mana issues. Like you just don't have the mana for it. Like the arcanes have been switched into the soul booster uh, for the leader. Jabs is about to pick up his own arcanes, and that's going to help out. 
But this is gonna be slaughter on towers. They give the space for the spirit breaker on bottom lane. He's pretty hard to kill, so if you are gonna commit to try and stop him, you have to bring down two heroes anyway. And he's doing the same thing. He's he's queuing up a hood. Only thing you need to be concerned about is magic damage. Physical damage is theoretically gonna come out of Spectre. That doesn't come in way later. And then I guess also Venomancer, but this Venomancer did go for the villain, Radiant's so you got that. Is under attack. That you also only <laughs> Yeah. But it's the amplification with Skyrath makes, like it can it can penetrate a lot of the resistance. Yeah. The problem is I don't think they have a way to properly put the magic damage onto heroes. Like, Limp is it at the moment. Batrider can't stay, stay alive. You know some farm is so close to his blink dagger. He needs that tier 1 tower in the bottom lane to fall, but while they are trying to harass that lane down and commit five heroes to the southern part of the map, Alliance are losing their tier 2 tower up on top. Because the Drogue can just keep pushing. She's got all the support in the world, you got all the restoration and heal to work with. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. At most, I guess I'm somewhat concerned that she doesn't have anything to do with that to range to be safer, or no pike completed either to, I mean, Dyer's be able to go more aggressive. But when you have your whole team here, there's really... Yeah, Radiant's there's bottom tower is under attack. You've, you've got your control. Like, I do... Radiant's it's hilarious to think about him, because normally with your ranger, you want to have the attack range. Because attack range is what's going to make sure that you don't lose your, your ulti power. Uh, oh, sorry, your, your aura, whatever. Yeah, your ulti. Um, but in this game, like, the Dream Call control with a Blink Dagger Puck, who for some reason has two Yule Scepters queued up. <laughs> just, just thanks. I just don't know what that is, but yeah. He must have just uh, like, accidentally double clicked. It's like, you know, I'm not going to change this. It increases the hitbox, really. Guaranteed to hit. No spirit brick. Unless, unless there's this quick buy thing. Oh, that's true. That is gonna screw that up. Yeah, that's very true. Alright, so... TNC can't find his target. They only find a Plague Ward randomly. Oh, well, wants to get something so bad. It actually just feels so hot as well, because, like, the Dora Ranger, if aura is what you're about, <laughs> you still go edgy items. Well, I'm so. Oh, she, she's she's finishing the full pipe. She's finishing a full pipe. Like this isn't like it's not even the spirit breaker. Like the other guy who would eventually build into it. They're getting the full pipe onto a draw ranger. Second, no, as a first item. First, like we're not gonna count drums as no. as like a first item. This feels very very odd. Because most of the time, like, for early items, you look towards Dragon Lance into Hurricane Pike, because positioning is amazing and range uh, increases great. Mana Star would also be fantastic in this, because you break off a lot of the amplification that will be on you, um, and potentially make life a lot harder for the Bat Rider, and it gives you power to split push. But you've gone away from both of those items to ensure that your team... Maybe is maybe they're thinking high ground. Maybe that's what this is all about, like, the, the pipe will come too late from DNZ. I mean, that's legitimate, because the Alliance has Spectre and they have Bounty Hunter. These are two heroes that very quickly make a game spiral out of control past a certain amount of time. But... Uh, <laughs> March of the, the Valkyrie and the Bounty Hunter off of the bees. That's what you need. You, you need uh, the new cosmetic for Spirit Breaker, oh, where he has man. Angel's Wings. Like the Legion Commander press the attack thing that yeah. pops out? Hell yeah! Yeah! Just like... He's <laughs> like chugging red balls. I mean monster. <laughs> she goes! The different sponsors at this hub. <laughs> I'm still struggling to justify this fully completed now pipe. I mean, yeah, so they want to end the game quickly, but... Yeah. I mean, even if you are looking for high ground siege, like you said, yeah. Dragon Lance, the attack Put range is so useful. Uh, Drow has one of the longest attack ranges naturally in the game. You are able to boost that significantly with Dragonlance, and Alliance don't have good heroes in closing that gap. Yeah, Batrider did go for that Blink Dagger, but, you know, Pocket's gonna be able to provide plenty of vision. And they just need someone like DNZ to run forward, like he's a bad You can bait out the Nova. Right. Like, you initiated on the Venom, and to bait out every ability he's got, and leave the draw on the back line. 
And then you get something like, like it's, it's almost like uh, Skidder's taking a page out of Father's book. Like these early decks and pipes. Of course. Charge over. Well, there's your last throw. Both Hansk and Pablo getting pushed back out of it. The Mystic Flare. Okay, Bloodstone Denial. Comes out from Melina. Jabs will complete his TP. The Nova is already being committed. And DNZ, well, he won't be so lucky to escape, or will he? The charge comes back on cooldown, oh, and look at him run. Me. The Shuriken will chase him, and will be enough damage. That level 4, it is. It's a level 4 Shuriken. He's gone 4 1 1 1 on this bounty. Any burst damage Dyer's they can get a handle on. And you look at a fight like that, and you think, like, okay, we'll uh, drop build a pipe. Does she really want to jump into a fight like that? No. Nope. Obviously not. I don't blame her for not wanting to get in that fight, but I do blame her for building an item that makes you want to get in the fight. It's this is a you're up against a spectre. I, I don't think she even clicked it. Well, I mean she left. She evacuated it as soon as she it came in, she was like, oh I'm done. Wish Shocker thought about it, Spearbreaker thought about it. Dry Ranger is a bigger push to it. It's just still smart from Penta. So Nova is down. You don't have a spectral horn available for Alliance. Uh, Batrider's Firefly is going to be on cooldown for a little bit longer, and there's no last. So, so they slip in, they take pro shot. They'll get the Aegis the Mormon, they get the insurance, and they're going to give it to the troop. Okay. Gotta get that pipe off. In the hurry, you gotta keep the Bloodstone charges up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're having some questions here, Toby. I'm. Uh, seem a little bit befuddled. Sebastian, don't listen to anything I say from now on. I'm just saying now, fucking man. Don't do it. Lena's gonna haste it with the Yule Scepter. They can set up quite nicely. Sending air up and towards the air. Fly strike the Ray follow up. And he's got no special horn to escape with. And no friends to help him out. And you know exactly what Penta was originally going to do. Then we'll, they're looking towards the mid tier 2 tower. Continue to remove buildings. And continue to win this game. They want th they want mid racks done by 30 minutes. Maximum. Build an item build like this on your drum that better be your game plan. So they've got the Aegis completed. You can still do it with Melster. You can still do it with I don't know what you're talking about. It's like... <laughs> Draw Ranger's terrible at hitting towers. <laughs> Everyone knows Why? that. Why? <laughs> oh, the bright side, she's going for four step first. Now, four step first, Dragonlance first. I don't know if you should go for the four step first, but uh, he is. Oh, no, 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 no yeah, she, she switched it around. She switched it around the belt. And now Spirit Breaker. Like he would have actually finished the pipe for the high ground push. Like he, wait, wait, we're going double pipe. We're going double pipe. He's got the, he's got it in his quick buy as well. At this point, as limp, you've got to look at the enemy's items and be like, should I even bother with the second acceptor anymore? Because like you've got the veil, you're not fully committed to a magic build. You can start transitioning into right click. And most of the time, Dry Ranger is very protected against right click because she has tons of agi gain. She has marksmanship. She's gonna get a ton of armor on the ball with that. This build, I mean, she has a fair amount of passive armor, but not nearly as much as traditional drought builds have. Radiance Middle Tower is under Vanguard attack. Vanguard is not even on the menu for Hera. He is gonna go miles away from it. He went for a minus for Hella Greedy. I just love that we've gone from like our last game with the Venomance where we're like, man, he's doing DPS build. Uh, I don't know this, about that. This, I, don't, I don't know about that. Now we're gonna Venomance who is going for the normal build. I don't know about that. This is not feeling right. Like something's not right here. The game of Dota 2, ever so dynamic. At least for the most part, I can safely say that anything you see a drone with a pipe, Radiance I will never feel like <laughs> Feels very odd. Like, I can still understand the, the, like, the casual hood. Like, yeah. this this is okay. Yeah. Uh, and they're sieging. Yeah, and they are sieging. Now, units some farms get looked at the initiation. You've got Blink plus four staff available. It's the best initiation for him, and then a very quick duel up to the Batrider. They still have the forces, which is even for the three men coil. They're sharing the, pipe, the Mystic Flare the and pipe. the Pipe. The value Pipe in your face, everyone that ever doubted him. Oh, wait, they have no Pipe anymore. The Nova's gonna connect, the Aegis of will burn, DNZ will fall. Where's that secondary Pipe? It doesn't exist. Skidder has to run away. No Hurricane Pipe to push back out again. But they have the Voodoo Restoration from Jazz, and they continue to pound into the Tier 3 tower. Fortification is the only thing that's going to stop them here. They'll take the tower back up, and they're going to focus on the Shrine just to start with by the looks of it. 
The Drow Ranger providing nearly 60 damage for all of her ranged allies, and they would have liked to be using that for their siege capabilities earlier on, but one of, or I guess Drow Ranger was the only hero that could have really confidently sieged it, because you need to have those Yule's reactions for that Batrider machine, which was heavily telegraphed. Immediately, the Bat Rider just got mitigated as soon as the lasso came out. And Drow Ranger didn't want to go down, actually used the pipe before the Master's Poison Open came out, but I'm sure it's like a little bit Opening from the top, he's got Dream Call, and one second time, he can survive that long, he can turn for a three man Dream Call. Phase Shift will allow for that, as DNC charges himself forward right on top of the Bounty Hunter and Limp. He can't out, he cannot outrun it. Locked in position, Yule's is the last strike array, Bounty Hunter pushed back up by the force off of Unison Pump to the tier 3 tower, but the siege will continue once more and they want to go to the bot lane and... Jacob Rex, you've still got all these ranged heroes. Lasso is up, but Haunt is still down, right? Now, the damage output's been more than enough, and that drum charge, everyone gets attack damage, everyone's got bonus apart from DC. Uh, but he's the frontline tank, bottom racks will fall. I said by 30 minutes to the latest, they are five and a half minutes in, fr in front of schedule. And the Spirit Breaker's got his second pipe, which isn't coming out in Courier. Efficiency, please. It's, it's okay. It's bringing Boogie's tread. It's okay. Drow's pipe is off in five seconds. Clearly. But you obviously need two. You need two pipes That's for this. true. Now, one for each cheek. For what it's worth, this pipe is proving to be useful again. Okay, the item itself I'm not railing against. But I'm pretty sure Drow could have built probably anything this game and it would be working out mostly the same way. Now, they're playing in such a way that they do have a pipe, so, you know, Puck's a little more aggressive and, you know, making these kinds of odd movements. I, maybe this is just Penta. I can't say I've seen enough of their games, but I love it whenever carries go more utility as opposed to selfishness, so far be it for me to discourage Dry Rangers in the Well, you would be heartbroken, I'm sure. It, yeah. We've managed to cycle through almost all of my most played heroes. Uh, the ones where I've, I know I get almost every matchup against it. And all the players are against those matches, I hope. They're, they're, they're at least, Pen Penta is at least doing this right. They understand that with the Drone Ranger lineup, you have to push. You have to be aggressive. You don't just hold back and just d diddle dally and say, oh, the Drone Ranger's gonna be fine later into the game. Like, wow, we just killed Agadim Center and she'll kill everything. Like, it's not that kind of hero. It can be that that kind of hero when you got other people to hold the lines, but they're playing it perfectly. Keep the pressure up. Keep pushing around. Like you've lost the Agus Immortal for now, but that doesn't mean you can't keep hunting for fights. Because you get one kill, you get one big kill. Like the Venomans are going down without buyback available. You take a lane of right to this lineup, and that's exactly what they're doing. So this I like, and also all the synergy you have. Like it's, it's the standard drone lineup you have. Four range, one melee, and the one melee is the stunner and the charger. And that's exactly what Spirit Breaker offers. Drow Ranger lineups do have to be very proactive. Yeah. And Penta was playing it like that from the start. Was roaming around all over the map. You it over? Well, that's not the face shift. They got the gem though. They got the gem. It's in the hands of Pablo, but now the charge DNC charging towards Lim, but they want that gem of true side back and they're able to get it back from the bounty hunter. A short-lived steal. Yeah, unfortunately, so what Puck was trying to do is you want to get that turnaround before you do the patient, kind of like the Magnus RP turnaround thing, so whenever you blink out, you blink out immediately without having to go to the mission. Problem is, he was sticking napalm, so he was turning it around super slowly. And unfortunately, cancels his phase shift ahead of schedule, but they're still gonna push without this. Well, you got catapult, you got drone. But now you don't have high ground vision. And Skidder, he kept walking forward, it's like he lost the vision but continued to fall in with the attack. Only one. Only one, that's true. 15 seconds to the next one. And Spectre's getting closer and closer to that Radiance that we saw in the makings all so long ago. But that's just something else that we're gonna mitigate by <laughs> The gate to the poison stick. Middle tower has yeah. Fallen. I can get hit by as many Plague Wars as I want to. Pretty much. Alright, so they've taken the mid-tier 3 tower, bottom rush is completely gone. Alliance is locked into a corner. Illusion. Late Roach 
respawn. It's it's not maximum. It's a minute short. Puts a little bit of time for Era as he will now complete that radiance and blade mail next. It's it's still very slow. A 28 minute radiance with a minus. Yeah. But no. still. Like at least the minus isn't. Like the mice is helping him efficiently get there. Yes, he does. Uh, <laughs> trying to justify it a little bit more for him. I, I mean, I imagine part of the reason was because they were imagining Pablo was going to have more influence as this bounty hunter that you can get a Midas inspector. This is going to part mindlessly while the other four of your heroes will be killed and track gold so you can. It is mine! They're looping around. Smoked up. So the line was drawn from Alliance, so what they want to do is they want to come in back through the mid lane. DNZ actually already felt something was wrong. So he came in closer. Memory still got the pipe. They pulled him almost out of Mystic Flare. Pipe is up, testing down to two. Here comes Boogie, a four man dream pile. Finally, you will bring down the Spirit Breaker, but all the reinforcements from Penta have arrived. Lip will get the ulti off. Jabs just letting it go. He may have enough with the Maledict damage. Lip Life Strikery will cancel his CP out, and Dro will finally die. Beck was able to catch up to him, but Era is the sole survivor of Alliance, and not the time they want to have it happen. Roshan is about to spawn up with the naked racks, they can just force the mid lane with Alina still alive. They can try, but the problem is Drow Ranger is dead, and so that was a lot of your damage. Right now, Blazemon is pretty stacked in his own right, and against only two heroes, it's enough to bring down the range racks. Like, with or without Drow. He limp off the tower, they attack into range drags, at least all the damage will remain. Spirit Breaker doesn't have pipes, so GG. Uh, he'll end up dying to Alliance. And now they have to retreat. Yes. You, you just wait for the next throw shot. There's six seconds until uh, Dro's back up. Boogie, look in. Okay, now they look inside the pit. And now I realize they have an easy throw shot. Response to the shrine, she's not sure. And I imagine that they'll give the Aegis to Lena's already opened up the slot. I, I'd actually, I'd do, I'd do it the other way around. Oh, like, yeah. Lena's gonna burn through a lot of mana anyway, you wanna give her the cheese. She has 16 bloods to burn, so... 43 hand regen per second. And he gets to draw and uh, cheese to the Lena. Alright. Protect the aura at all of costs. Of course, of course. How could I be so foolish? No, I, I remember uh, something Fear told me, and this I think it was like three years ago, where he actually hates Drow Ranger. Uh, to a point where he's like, you know what? The uh, like this is when Arteezy was running mid row and was like dying ten times. And he's like, the only thing that throw needs to do is stay alive. So I'd be fine if once we're like ten minutes into the game and she's had level six, uh, that she just stays in town. <laughs> like that's that's all that needs to happen for the throw ranger. It was around that time that we started like joking around saying, hey, you could run support throw ranger. I like how, how highly Skinner is prioritizing bringing down the Plague Wards. Like every single one that Lift is throwing down. It's free like, gold. Yeah, he just, he just focuses on killing it. CS is looking fantastic for him. Jump, jump in. Lasso on the back end. This time the Warzone Yule set to cancel it off. The Gust is catching at the Venom Answer. Now the Paralyzing Cast. It's really a ravage of an ultimate. A secondary silence as well from the pot. They've brought down the mid melee ranks. The question is, can Penta bail out of this one. They don't have to keep the pressure up unless they feel they can get a kill. Nether Strike is up for that one. Nova connects on four of the heroes. Fear of Break has created enough space just yet for the new ultimate back in position. Keep the suns up. The orb damage plus the Death Ward. Blade Mal was an absolute pain for them to deal with. But the damage is still there. Blaze and Skitter. These are the cannons. The range cannons. Use the pump. No, 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 no. Run. He's, say. he's dead. He can't. He can't run up a hill. Oh, can miss, he? Miss, no. miss. Ultra kill for Blaze. It's too good. It's way too good. Three heroes are dead on the lions. They do not have buyback. Penta is very, very low. And then oh, it comes Venno. Remember for the Aegis mail. He wants to die. He wants to die. It's the Aegis of the Immortal. He wants Alliance to continue to commit onto him. What's Blaze one doing? Stand, hold hands. Like the problem is, it's a fiery hand for the guys. This does not fit you. Yep. The Montague and Capulet. 
Not to mention they're both female. Lacuna Blade, Pablo gets deleted. Skitter just wants the Megas. Stands his ground. Doesn't... Okay, now he will. The Radiant Catapult was doing the work. Charge is coming forward, so all they can do is just turn. Dream calls up. Fenomenza can't get out of this one. Send a strike him up. Light strike array. Fenomenza will fall. 90 seconds on the sideline. Lena will have to deny herself up, but thanks to Bloodstone Charger, she'll be back up in 9 seconds time. Yeah, I think that was more insurance to make sure that the person can get out of these. But at this point, Bloodstone Charger is not got these things. Make sure that the rest of Skinner Fairy's in a cell. Obviously, has tons of magic resistance. <laughs> Fairy's in a witch dog. That's what he means. That's true. Back already. Great. It's looking like curtains for Alliance. It is, and it's looking fantastic for Penta. You can actually check how they're going in the, in the uh, group score. But this is, this is the greatest forum. Nice DNZ. You go for that mad cow taunt. This man's got a disease. Back. Jump in. Malazix it up. All that damage is guaranteed to, to work. Laguna Blade to kill off Sky Rest It is over. You can fly back into a Spectral Haunt. This is classic Envy and Loader style. Save the money. Haunt back into the fight. But they know there's no hope. GG. That was a solid game from Penta. Item choices. There's going to be a lot for people to code and question later on. But. A win, a win is a win. A win is a win. Doesn't matter what you build at the end of the day if you manage to make it work.